Set Apart Youth, please welcome to the stage Pastor Blessing Pretorius. Say with me, I am set apart and separated unto the Lord for His purposes. Amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to be short with you all today. Um, In a couple of minutes, my husband is going to come up and uh, bring a word as well. So I am just the appetizer today. Is that all right with everyone? (laughs) Is that how you say it in America? Or is it the entree? How how do you say it? Appetizer. Appetizer. Okay. (laughs) All right. Okay. So, but I want to... yeah, okay, let's begin. Um, there where you are, won't you turn with me to the book of Leviticus 20 verse 7. How many of you know where the book of Leviticus is? Do you know where that is? Do you visit that part of the Bible? <laughs> it's in the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. All right. And um, this is what it says there in the book of Leviticus 20, verse 7. It says there, Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. Keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I'm going to read it again. It says, Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. Keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Amen. So tonight I want to speak about, you know, the theme for the conference today is being set apart. When we speak about being set apart, we speak of sanctification. And sanctification speaks of a separation. When God, because here what does it say? Who is our sanctifier? Who is our sanctifier? Say with me. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. All right, that's what God says. So who is the one who sanctifies us? God is the one who sanctifies us. And if you read throughout the whole Old Testament, going into the New, there's a theme that you see in the Bible, that God is all about setting aside a people for himself. God is all about setting aside a people for himself. He did that with the Israelites. He said, I want to set aside a people for myself. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And I want you to know that when you are, a, when you are God's people, say to your neighbor, I'm a, I'm a God people. <laughs> no, say I'm God's people. I know it's bad English grammar, but English is not my home language, so it's okay. <laughs> We need to become people of God. I know that sounds very simple, but this is how we are to live. We need to become people of God. Being a person of God means I belong to Him. He is my God. I am His person. I am His people. But for me to be a person, a people of God... He first has to separate me from everyone else. For me to be a person of God, a people of God, for me to say I'm I'm God's people, he needs to separate me from everyone else and from everything else in this world. God is all about separation. And I know that word has a negative context especially in South Africa where we have broken homes, homes that are separated. But I want to show you something with God. 
every biblical principle that he wants us to do, it's all about separating us from everything that is of this world. Do you guys want to talk about that? All right. When it comes to, let's talk about baptism. Do you guys know what water baptism is? You do that here, right? Yeah. When you get baptized, what happens? A separation happens. A separation of the old and the new person that God is making you become. Do you agree? All right. When God baptizes you in his Holy Spirit, a separation happens. A separation of what? The Holy Spirit, the Bible teaches us, is a seal on us that we are children of God. The Bible says that Satan is also a father. And he has his own children. Do you know that? He's the father of lies. And those who do what he wants, what he says, the Bible says, belongs to who? Who is their father? All right. But when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what happens? We become sealed as children of God, and we are separated from the spirit that is at work in this world. When we receive Jesus into our lives as our Lord and as our Savior, what happens? We become separated from the destruction that awaits those that have not yet received Jesus. Do you agree? In all the principles that in the Bible we apply, it's all about separation. Why? God is holy, and so we need to become holy. Within ourselves, We don't have the power, and we don't have the will to become everything that he has called us to be. But he makes a way for you and I through Jesus Christ that we have the opportunity to be separated, sanctified, set apart for his purposes. What am I speaking about tonight? And I want you to put a title to this message. And the title to this message, say with me, faith for sanctification. Say it again, say faith for sanctification. See, many people begin with faith for salvation, where Jesus saves your soul, but then they stop there. You don't understand that there are many things that God has set up in place to sanctify you in his walk with him. How do you know a person is sanctified by God? What is of this world no longer impacts you in your life. The temptations of this world Because you are separated, it's no longer yours. The thoughts of this world, because you no longer of this world, those are not your thoughts. That is why, child of God, you have to be so careful about adapting to the ways and the standards of this world, because you're not meant to look like this world. It no longer applies to you. Why? Because not only have I had faith for my salvation, I also have faith for my sanctification. That the same God who has saved my soul from destruction is the same God who will save my mind, save my character, save my will, save my Actions from destruction. Why, child of God, 
you have said yes to Jesus. But when we look at the areas of your life, your heart, your mind, your will, your actions, it looks like the world. How does that happen? You need faith for your sanctification. Faith to believe that God has really set me apart, has really separated me from this world. The ways and the paths of this world, no. The word of God is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. And because I am a child of God, my footsteps will be ordered by him which means I don't walk the way everyone else is walking. My mind is being renewed because God is transforming me on a daily basis as I spend time with Him. And so what happens? I am not like this world, and I don't conform. Why? Because I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. And what of my character? See, the Bible teaches us in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, that there is a character of those who have received the Holy Spirit. Separated. And what is that character? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That is who you become. That becomes your character as a child of God. Why? Because I am set apart. I have been sanctified. So what am I speaking about today? Faith for sanctification. Why? So that you can understand that there is a different life God wants you to live that looks very different from this world. But like I began with saying, separation does not have a good connotation because separation is not easy. And that is why people remain in the mess that they remain in. Mess in their mind. Mess in their heart. Mess in their, in their will. In their soul. In their emotion. Mess in their actions. Why? Because separation is painful. To separate from what you love, what brings you comfort, what brings you peace, it is painful. But we've got to be willing to go through that separation. Why am I saying that it's painful? Because it is. Giving up an addiction that God can set you free from a stronghold, it's painful. Giving up a certain way of thinking so that God can liberate your mind and that your mind becomes like the mind of Christ, the way he intended it to be. That your mind doesn't become a rubbish dump for Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Unlearning horrible thinking habits, that's painful. To stop doing something that you're already in the habit of doing and you hear people say, your mother did it this way, your father did it this way, you will also do it this way. They were an addict, you will also be an addict. They were abusive, you will also be abusive. They were on drugs, you will also be on drugs. They were poor, you are also going to be poor. To have different actions from what you're used to and what you've gotten into the habit of doing, that separation is going to be painful. But my question to you tonight is, are you willing to go through the pain? Are you willing to go through the pain? You know, when God was telling the Israelites, what was telling Moses, why he wants him to lead the children of Israel out of captivity. Do you know that it was very much about them separating from the Egyptians? He said, I want them to go into a land that I've called them to, and I want them to 
there, worship me and bring sacrifices to me. That's what he said. But you know what? Them leaving Egypt, it wasn't easy. At first they celebrated, but they had to go through a tough journey to leave their captivity, to go to the freedom that God had promised them. It wasn't easy. In fact, the Bible says that God did not let them go through a shorter route. There was a shorter route. There was a better route. Because he said, because if trouble comes along, they're just going to turn back. How many of us, God is calling you out of captivity. God has called you out of slavery to something. But you took the shortcut. And because you took the shortcut, when things get tough, it's easy for you to get back to your captivity. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't take shortcuts. Say it again, say, don't take shortcuts. See, when God gets involved in your life and he gets involved in your mess, you need to allow God to do everything that he needs to do. Don't take shortcuts. Don't be like, okay, well, at least I'll go to church. Thank you. That was a great service. Amen. I'll see you next week. Don't take shortcuts. The process of sanctification, it is painful. It is long. In fact, it is lifelong, just by the way. The only time we're going to be perfect is the day we see Jesus and when our time is done here on earth. It requires work. Separation requires work, but nobody wants that. It's going to require work. These relationships you're going to have to end. Oh. Now that's painful. Now listen. That's painful. But there are relationships you're going to have to end. There are connections you're going to have to put to an end. There are accountability partners you're going to have to call into some things for some people. You need to become a lover of the Word of God. Be in the Word of God. Read your Bible. You're going to have to become someone who loves to talk to God in prayer. See, God has done everything that needed to be done for you to no longer be captive. That you would be called out of slavery, called into the freedom that he has called you to. But you need to be willing to do the work. Say with me, no shortcuts. Some of you sitting here today, this is my question to you. What is the work that you were supposed to do in your situation that you can stay free and you didn't do it? Because that's where we've got to begin tonight. To say, God, there are things you called me out of. You've saved my soul, but there, but there are strongholds in my life, in my heart, in my mind, in my emotions, in my actions, in my will, in my desires. But do you know even that is the work of Satan? Satan's nature is to dominate over people. That is why anytime you see uh, uh, anything that has to do with domination, it's demonic. Because God is not like that. He loved Adam and Eve so much that he gave them free will. But what Satan does is he gets you by stirring up desires that we entertain. And suddenly you don't even desire to read the Bible anymore. No desire to go to church. If it's raining, you're not going to see me. If it's too hot, you're not going to see me either because I'm going to take my boat out. And then you guys have snow. Oh, God bless you guys. 
we don't have snow in South Africa. Suddenly your desires are different. And that is what I want to pray for for tonight. That you would have faith for your sanctifications. That you would believe that God will sanctify even your desires. What you want. So no shortcuts. You're not going to pretend that God is what you want. No, he's going to work in you. That you, he really becomes who you want, that his way really becomes what you want. And yes, it's going to be difficult. You're not always going to feel like it. But let me give you a couple of scriptures before I close. Remember, I'm just the appetizer. So to sanctify something is to set it apart for God's special use and purpose. God's people throughout the Bible are called sanctified because they set apart for God's special purpose. Now I want to read to you a scripture that is very popular, and I know even here in this church, it is a scripture that is popular because it is one of the, what we call the confessions of the blood of Jesus. And I want you to turn with me there to your Bible. And when we confess the scripture, normally we say, by the blood of Jesus, I have been sanctified. No, because I walk in fellowship with other believers. Because I walk in the light and have fellowship with other believers. The blood of Jesus cleanses me now, forever. But I want to read a few more verses from there. Give me a second. There we go. Okay. All right. So open with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 John. 1 John 1 verse 5 to 7. Are you there in your Bible? Give me a second. My notes are not working with me tonight. All right. So I want to read from verse 5. This is what it says. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Say with me, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. And that is where the beginning of your freedom comes. God is light. In him, there is no darkness. So if there is darkness in my life, something is wrong. And then it says here, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. Those who are sanctified by God, they don't walk in darkness. You cannot say you have fellowship with God, but you walk in darkness. Verse 7 says, verse 7 is the one we often quote. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, if we do what? As if we do what? As he is in what? If we walk in light, as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, 
Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Another word for cleansing is actually sanctification. The Bible says that the one that God has cleansed, let no one say that they are not clean, that they are not sanctified. But it starts here with saying, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. See, many people want the benefits of the blood of Jesus, but you don't want to walk in the light. You've got to walk in the light as he is in the light. And then it says, then we have what? We have fellowship with one another. Fellowship with one another, which means what? That process of sanctification, why you got to disconnect from the wrong people is because who you have fellowship with, that is who you're going to be like. If you have fellowship with people who are in darkness, you'll never walk in the light. Good intentions will not make you walk in the light. You've got to actually walk in the light. And you've got to have fellowship with others who are also walking in the light. Fellowship with one another. Some of you here today, God's got to change your language and your attitude towards church and church people and church connections. Churches are like this. Church people are like that, but that's who you got to have fellowship with. Have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse you from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Say with me, I have sin. Oh, it's all of us. Sorry, can I get a tissue, please? Verse 9 says this. Thank you. Verse 9 says this, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, salvation. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, sanctification. He is faithful and just to do what? Forgive us of all our sin. Remember I started off with saying many people have faith for their salvation, but it ends there. But after God forgives you, He has the power to cleanse you from unrighteousness. Righteousness is a gift from God. And you receive it because you believe in His Son, Jesus. You're not just forgiven. You are cleansed of that unrighteousness. You are sanctified. You are purified from unrighteousness. So if there's unrighteousness in your life, you need to get to God. And you need to have faith for your sanctification. That the same God that forgives me is the same God that cleanses me. The same God that forgives me is the same God that cleanses me. He's forgiven my soul. He's forgiven me of my sin. And now I get to go to heaven. Okay, great. But He's the same God that will cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness in my mind, unrighteousness in my will, unrighteousness in my actions unrighteousness in my words, unrighteousness in my character. He will cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I'm going to end it there. Have faith today for your cleansing, for your consecration, for your purifying. Many of you, you've already received Jesus in your life. And for those of you who have not, you'll get the opportunity to do so tonight before the night ends. But I want to pray today 
with Christians who have been compromised in their life because you forgot at some point that I'm actually set apart from this world. I'm separated from this world. In fact, the Bible speaks of how they are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. But God cleanses you and I so that we can become vessels of honor used for His purposes and for what and for His glory as well. If you find yourself being a vessel of dishonor, because somewhere along the line, you forgot to have faith for your sanctification. You love God, you love people, you're filled by the Holy Spirit, but there's areas in your life that are compromised and it's not just sin, acts of sin, but it's also what's going on in your mind. Some of you, you're struggling within your mind, with your thoughts. Some of you are struggling within your emotions. But God wants to cleanse you today. He wants to set you apart and sanctify you. If you want that prayer, won't you stand on your feet there where you are? And I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray today with you that the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, as you make a decision to walk in the light as He is in the light. So again, this is for those you're already in Christ, but you need some cleansing. You need to be set apart. You need to separate from a couple of things. Won't you raise your hand with me there where you are? Just raise your hands. And just say with me, Lord, I thank you for the blood of Jesus shed for me. I believe in the power that is in the blood of Jesus to not only bring forgiveness in my life, but to bring about a cleansing. Now I want you to think of the areas in your life that you need God to cleanse. And with every eye closed, think of the areas. What do you need God to cleanse in your life today? What needs to be set apart before Him today? Say with me, God, forgive me for allowing filth into the areas of my life. I believe today that you're the God that will cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I pray that you separate me from the spirit that is at work in this world. I pray you separate my character from being like those who don't belong to you. Say, I pray that you set apart my mind for you, for what you want me to do with it. Set me free, God. Say it again. Say, set me free, God, from wrong thoughts and wrong thought patterns. In Jesus' name I pray. Say with me, set me free, God, from strongholds and from addictions that have been plaguing my life. So with me, I apply the blood of Jesus over every area of my life to bring about a purification. And though my sin were as red as scarlet, I believe today you, God, wash me in the blood of Jesus and make me as white as snow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. If you would like to get connected, need any information, or need prayer, 
We would love for you to text or call us. Our number is 302-315-3557.